How's it going everyone? This is MimeLang. Welcome back to my channel where today we are finally getting to see some ultra wide RX 480 benchmarks. Yes, those benchmarks which I kept promising to different people, but they kept getting postponed and delayed due to some other stuff taking priority. But they are finally here, so let's roll the tape. Is quality ultra-wide gaming possible without breaking the bank? Well, yes it is. It requires sticking to 2560 by 1080 resolution so that you don't blow up your entire budget on the GPU alone. Luckily, there's a ton of options for ultra-wide monitors with this resolution, ranging from 25 inches up to 34. With the advent of FreeSync, you also get the option of improving your experience without dropping an extra $100 to $150 for a G-Sync enabled monitor. A great FreeSync ultra-wide monitor in GPU combination at a decent price level is possible with the help of the Radeon RX 480. This card has come in with a good price to performance point and has only gone up in power with drivers maturing. So a $450 to $600 budget will net you a great FreeSync ultra-wide experience nowadays. I run an ultra-wide LG 29 UC88-B monitor, which I reviewed some time ago by the way, and it can be had on eBay most of the time for a killer sub $300 price and I genuinely recommend it to anyone wanting a quality screen, curve and freezing support with 40 to 75 hz range. Check out my impressions on it if you're interested. I know this video is probably long overdue for most of you, since I try to bring ultra-wide related content and benchmarks as often as possible, and I've already done this for the GTX 1060, you can check out the video over here if you please. So it was about time to see the other side of the fence, especially since it requires less money on the monitor compared to a G-Sync 1. For this test, and as usual, I used my AIO cooled RX 480 and I tested at two ultra wide resolutions 2560 by 1080 and 3440 by 1440. The latter just to see how a very demanding resolution behaves on a $230 card. I also performed the benchmarks at stock 1266 MHz GPU with 8000 MHz memory, as well as the usual overclock I run, which is 1465 MHz GPU core and 8500 memory. So there's plenty of variety in this test. Benchmarking is performed on my i7-4790K at 4.6GHz paired with 16GB of fast 2400MHz RAM. I used the latest Catalyst to relive driver and also tested in total 11 games ranging from DX9, 11, 12 and Vulkan to cover the entire spectrum. I will not pit the RX 480 against the GTX 1060 right now, I will however the next time that AMD releases a driver that again boosts performance for Polaris. Then we will have a showdown and see which card you should pick for your ultra wide pleasures. I'm using 5% lows as usual since they're a better metric than flat out minimums. These represent the average of the lowest 5% of frames. You will discover throughout these 11 games that generally the RX 480 tends to scale linearly to the GPU overclock. You'll also discover that 3440 by 1440 is definitely not a suitable resolution for this card unless you're willing to accept the huge performance sacrifice or bumping down the quality settings. However, in the grand majority of the titles, 2560 by 1080 is handled extremely well by this card even while at stock. Personally, I would not keep any GPU of this caliber at stock, but not everyone likes or wants to overclock. The truth is that there's so much untapped potential in this card if you bump the clocks up that I have to recommend doing it for a smooth 2560 by 1080 ultra wide experience. Now remember, pair these 5% low on average frames with the fact that you have the option of pairing your GPU with a freezing monitor. This is of huge help smoothing out the perceived frames by quite a bit in your monitor's default freezing range. This is the reason that for non-multiplayer titles I have no issues in running averages of 55 with dips down to high 40s just because I have that free sync keeping my back. You can even improve on this if you offer an LFC monitor that's low frame rate compensation. The software implementation by AMD allows the lower freezing range to be extended to the low 30s while still doing its job, but 30s is still bad territory anyway, honestly. This doesn't quite mean that you can just offer a 3440 by 1440 monitor and get away with it as LFC doesn't flat out perform magic. Even G-Sync, which does this in hardware, is lackluster on the low spectrum. But this is natural and to be expected not to be able to compensate such a low frame rate through what is essentially a virtual technique. Some games scale better while others simply do not. Some games just downright perform poorly unless you throw a $600 card at them. I'll let you enjoy the benchmarks and feel free to pause at any time to take a closer look.
alright, so I've been running this setup, meaning the RX 480 and a freezing ultrawide monitor for a few months and I'm satisfied with the experience, both in terms of performance and as well as what freezing brings to the table. As for ultrawide gaming, you need to experience it for yourself first. All modern games support ultrawide, but it's always a matter of how well it is implemented. Some games will just apply black bars like Overwatch and other games will extend the scene to the sides, allowing for an awesomely immersive experience. I remember when I first fired up Witcher 3 in ultrawide and I was blown away by the awesome visuals. It felt like playing a new Witcher title, like it was pulling me in. I also had a similar shock with Doom as I didn't expect it to look so pretty at 21 by 9 In the end, ultrawide is dependent on three major things within any title, visuals, implementation and art direction. If any of these are missing or are not up to scratch, then the experience will not be at its peak. I trust that ultrawide gaming is only going up from this point at the end of 2016 and all major titles will abide by the three great cornerstones of 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And once Vega releases and hopefully is on par with everyone's expectations, we'll also have a very good 3440 by 1440 card that is able to power FreeSync monitors and push close to 60 or more FPS in modern titles. On the other hand, FreeSync has gained a lot of attention, market and mind share and is here to stay. It's only going to improve in the coming months and years and this is only of benefit to all gamers. I'll close this by expressing how eager I am to see a decently priced Vega powering an equally decently priced FreeSync 3440 by 1440 monitor. Undoubtedly, the RX 480 is a great ultrawide card as long as you don't pair it with a 3440x1440 monitor. I hope this video helped you out in picking your next ultrawide card and thank you for watching, thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody, bye bye.